And we might get opportunity soon because fanfare. <laughs> Great fanfare. <laughs> Hey there, Andrew. It's another episode of the Showstopper Podcast, our monthly chat to amazing people from the world of musical theatre and comedy and improv. Oh, what a joy it is. We're so lucky. And today's guest, my goodness, she brought the sunshine. Absolutely. Joanna Woodward, she is sunshine, isn't she? She really is. She sits there with her blonde hair and her sunbeams shining out of her face. It reminds me of that old Roald Dahl quote. What was the old Roald Dahl quote? If sunbeams shine out of your face, you'll be a happy person. Huh. That's definitely a misquote. So, <laughs> sorry, Roald. Wasn't a very nice man, by all accounts. Oh, really? Oh, did you not know that? No, yeah. I didn't. Uh, interestingly, I actually won an award from him and he was very nice to me. Well, you, you're you the only one. Right. Yeah, no, he was anti-Semitic and, and horrible. Oh, yeah. dear. Okay, well, we, we shouldn't talk any more about him then. Well, Give him any more airtime. No, no, exactly. I did win a weird voucher. It was for 100% attendance at school for five years, Andrew. How sad sad is that? I'm not sad at all. It's, you know, commendable. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, do you know what I got for it? I got a £10 water stone. £10 that pound That's for what 100% I got. for five years. But yeah. Yeah. There I was clopping my way to school every single day. I mean, how many days even is that? That's yeah, a lot of time. Lot of, and I, knowing you, some of those days you were undoubtedly at death's door, Absolutely. but still went in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was scraping the pavement with my fingernails, dragging myself to St. Bernard High School for girls. Ali, we, if listeners want to club together and give her a proper reward for for all that attendance, you know, then please do. Yeah, a £20 voucher would be great. At least, at least. Were you ever in trouble at school? I got in with the bad gang at one really? point. At one point. It was a really fleeting time. Not during time. that five years of attendance? No. Uh, well, no, actually, it was It was during oh, right. that high school time, but I got involved with, with the with the bad girls. Right. And um, it was just for maybe half a term before I saw the light and oh, I wow. had to focus my GCSEs. And do you know what we <laughs> did to our music teacher? We turned our classroom around oh, and what? did everything backwards to the teacher. We wrote in our books backwards. We wrote the music and the lesson on the board that was written up there. We wrote it backwards just to send her in into a kind of twilight zone, time loop, wow. um, uh, terror, terrorization moment. That's and like that's like hijinks from an American high school movie. Yeah. I don't know if people actually did that in real life. Yeah, we should do that in a showstopper show. Next time we get high school. Okay, here's the plan okay. for our improvised <laughs> musical. Okay. If we get an American high school, we're gonna make that scene happen. Great. Done. Next next time we, we get an American high school, we'll done remember deal. that. And we might get opportunity soon because fanfare. <laughs> A great fanfare. <laughs> <laughs> we are coming back to the West End. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. We're opening at the Cambridge Theatre on May the 22nd. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. That Seven Dials is just a buzzing place to be, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Feels really does feel like the heart of the glittering West End. Yeah, absolutely. And we're playing at the Cambridge, which is where Matilda is currently playing. They're dark on Monday, so we're playing at least once a month. Slightly confusingly, sometimes we're playing twice a month. <laughs> I'm worried that I'm going to get confused by the amazing cross arch design. I'm good, I think I might start seeing words in the uh, in the lettering and just start inserting them into improvised songs. Like a sort of Ouija board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The improv gods have been in touch and they say, insert blank, depending on setting. Amazing. Well, come and see Ali get freaked out. <laughs> Uh, as you said, we've got an amazing guest uh, on today's podcast, Joanna Woodward. We also had uh, showstopper Philip Pellew in the room. We recorded this at Mousetrap Theatre Projects. And on keys, we had uh, amazing showstopper MD Jordan Clark. Yes. Shall we have a listen? Yes, please. <laughs> Joanna Woodward. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm just really happy to be here because my 18 month old hasn't stopped screaming for 48 hours. So this is, oh, you know, wow. this is a lovely break for me. We're very <laughs> pleased to be a break from parenthood. Yes. That's, that's our main... If nothing else, yeah. <laughs> that's what it says under our Edinburgh brochure entry. <laughs> the break from parenthood. Come and see Showstop with the Improvised Musical. Perfect. Yeah. And have you travelled far today, Joanna? I've come from Surrey oh, today. Lovely. Yeah. It's been a bit of a change. I used to live in Hackney mm -hmm. and then during the pandemic, um, uh, what with the one child and another one on the way, we were like, let's move out to the countryside. Yeah. So we did it and it's been great. It's really great. It's just a really nice little villagey feel. Lots of ex-Londoners and lots of sort of TV and types, you know, so similar, similar vibes. Which TV is nice. types. TV types, yeah. <laughs> My husband works in TV and then he's sort of bumped into a million 
cameramen. They have a TV mafia drinks club in my village, so it must be. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. well, in, a, in a kind of speakeasy, underground kind of way? No, or? just okay. the pub, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure. Everybody knows about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, nothing secretive at okay. all. I just told everyone, didn't yeah, I? So. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I was imagining well. the, the cotton wool in the cheeks and everything and the, um, <laughs> the full godfather bit. Amazing. Well, uh, great. And how is your your um, your journey in and out? Because of course you are a working West End professional musical theatre actor. Yes. Yeah, it's fine. It's actually only thirty minutes on the train. I walked oh. today from Waterloo, which was lovely. Oh, I'd say yeah. from Isha. No, not from Isha. <laughs> Although I am in training for an hundred k walk at the moment, so I probably oh, should wow. be walking from Isha. But I did. That's incredible. What's your hundred k for? Are you doing it for charity or for, I, for a laugh? Um, I'm doing it for, it's an ultra challenge from London to Brighton at the end of May. Wow. Um, I'm doing it for brain tumour research. That's um, amazing. In aid of my little girl, my eldest daughter. Yeah, um, and yeah. I'm doing it with three of my mates who are doing it for various causes. And amazing. Yeah, I've had three marathon runners tell me that it is harder than the marathon so far. So oh, wow. I'm starting to freak out a bit because I definitely couldn't run a marathon. Um, but there we are. It'll be fine, right? <laughs> for fine. sure. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be yeah. great. It'll be great. So you're enjoying your walking and training. And I've everything. only done one. Okay. So it's going How really it go? well. <laughs> You've only done yeah. one walk. One walk. I right. did um, 23 kilometres and it was really hard. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, go- it's going well. Well, you're going to you're gonna absolutely <laughs> crush it. You'll and crush the great it. thing to know is it's only four times that that you've got to do. Exactly. So. And apparently there's lots of food along the way. So oh, that's nice. going to be like, you know, the thing that keeps me going. Just yeah, the yeah. next pit stop. More food and coffee and a massage apparently at the what? halfway point. Hello. Sounds luxurious. I know. Fabulous. So, exactly. It's basically a spa day. <laughs> <laughs> On the move. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, lovely. And when is that taking place, sorry? End of May. So is it the 27th? I want to say the 27th of Amazing. May. Amazing. Might people be able to follow you on your Instagram and donate? Yes. The Joanna Woodward. There you Amazing. go. Amazing. Yeah. There's oh, the link on there. So Wonderful. It must be busy right now. What's a day in Joanna Woodward's life like? Oh, it varies day to day, really. Um, at the moment, I haven't started my next show. So I'm in this kind of strange limbo where mm-hmm. I know it's coming and I'm really excited. Um, but yeah, mostly parenting all day at the moment. I've been sure. doing a few cabarets, which has been good fun. And then we're recording the album soon for Time Traveller's Wife. Amazing. So. Amazing. And that is the show you just mentioned, the show yes. you're, you're waiting on beginning, Time Traveller's Wife, uh, based on the Audrey uh, Niffene- is it Niffenegger, how do you that's pronounce right. that? Yeah, Niffenegger, that's right. uh, based on her best-selling novel, turned yeah. into a film as well, I think. It was a film. Yeah, I haven't actually watched the film. Probably shouldn't have said that. It's quite different yeah. from the film. I think we're more based on the book, I believe. Yeah, um, great. Yeah. And music by Joss Stone and uh, Dave Stewart of, uh, right. of Eurythmics. Yes, yes, the legendary Dave Stewart. Tell um, us about the show. Well, uh, it's great. <laughs> I, um, we did a little preview of it in Chester last year we did sort of we only did 16 shows actually um but we did a full rehearsal schedule and had the full shebang revolving stage and led screens and everything um so it's it's really beautiful and the chester audiences seem to love it and then we sort of sat at home waiting to hear and we've now had the news it's coming to the apollo it's wonderful really because it's actually very human this is what i always think is that although it's about time travel um and that's a bizarre concept to try and put on mm. stage. And there are millions of costume changes. Um, uh-huh. It is actually very human. And it's about a couple trying to work through the complexities of marriage and parenting and being an artist, um, all with the complication of time travel being thrown in. In wow. that Henry can disappear at any given moment because of a genetic disorder that he was born with. And he can't control where he goes uh, or when he comes back. Um, he also appears everywhere naked, which um, is a problem uh, for him, maybe. I don't know, not for us. We enjoy it. Lovely sure, David cool. Hunter is uh, uh, is playing uh, Henry. Right. Um, yeah. And there's just beautiful songs, beautiful poppy, soulful, Joss Stone kind of style Amazing. songs through that it. That sounds so enjoyable to perform. It Did- is. It's also incredibly emotional. Sure. Um, we can actually hear the sobbing from the audience. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, but the producer told me not to say that because he wants people to enjoy themselves. So it's also <laughs> really happy as well. <laughs> uh, and you play Claire, the eponymous time traveller's yes, wife. Yes, yes, the wife, yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. She's an artist. Um, and it's written by, the book's written by Lauren Gunderson. And she's just a brilliant modern funny feminist writer um so the words really leapt off 
the page um, to me and I find it just so much fun to perform. Um, and it's really from Claire's point of view, which is great because mm. I think you might think it's going to be all about the guy that has the magic. Um, but actually it's it's about the woman who's left behind and how challenging that is. Um, yeah. Don't know if any of you guys have, have read the book, but yeah, I think that's really remarkable that it is about the emotional impact of that. If you're not into sci-fi, it's absolutely not that kind of adventure story. It's imagining this was real for a second and then feel what, what that does to a person. Yeah. Was the person waiting and, and never knowing what's happening? I think it's amazing. Yeah, exactly that. But thrown in with lots of uh, amazing illusions to display yeah. the time travel by Chris Fisher, um, oh, wow. who's the best. Um, yeah. So there's lots of exciting moments thrown in as well it, it yeah. really cool. looks so beautiful as well i saw i've I saw some of the production images, which I assume must be from the Chester production. And there's one of you and David with this kind of starlit background yeah. embracing. And it's just so moving, that picture itself. It's, yeah. You know, you can feel it coming off the two of you. Yeah, it's really beautiful. We all actually gasped when we first saw it because it's all video screens. Um, so when, when they're in the meadow, there's sort of, you have all the meadow growing up through the video and it's... Yeah, it's amazing. Lots and lots of different elements, like so many different technical departments in the tech rehearsals. It was it was crazy. It's very filmic, like all the scenes are very, very quick. And uh, David and I have no time. So the wardrobe and wigs team are incredible. They're sort of mm -hmm. ripping wigs off my head and pushing me back on the stage. Um, but yeah, there's so much to cover because it covers sort of a whole a whole lifetime, really. So it's very, it's very quick. Um, and I was worried that the audience would not be able to stay on the train with us, but actually it seems they do. I have not read the book. So the conceit is that he is unstable in time mm -hmm. and you, of course, are not. So why is that? Why is he yes. a time traveller? He's got a genetic disorder that he was born with, um, yeah, that causes him to just disappear. Oh, right. Yeah. That's not something you can go to the NHS for. No. It? Well, we do try to go and see a doctor <laughs> during the show. That is part of it. Because um, time travel would help you with the queuing and the waiting. You see, you'd think you could sort of skip ahead. And maybe yes. oh, he can't take control, control it. He can't control it. it. Oh. Yeah. Because mm. as a parent, the concept of time mm -hmm. and having been able to use it is... Uh, as a parent myself, has certain appeals. I think, oh, I could skip through a few things or I'll also <laughs> go back yeah. and redo something slightly better. Yes, yes. No, he doesn't have the choice, unfortunately. I see. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a drawback, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, slightly. If you had the ability to control your time travel, starting with Philip, where would you go? I would go back to uh, yesterday when I tried to go and see a film and was rejected <laughs> from the cinema because my daughter, I said my daughter was 13 and so she wasn't old enough to go and see the film, I would go back to that and I would choose a different film to go to. Ah, okay. So that our time was spent better and I didn't get so grumpy. How very honourable. I thought you were going to say that you were going to go back and lie about her age, but no, very honourable. No, no, yeah. no. You're going to go back and... Because my daughter was very keen for me to, to say how old she was because she was concerned. And so I initially went saying, I'm sure there won't be a problem, but I will say. And I said, and they, they pointed out, ah, we can't. And I thought, oh, well, very well, we shall do something else what instead. What pure and honest offspring you've created, Philip. How I have, did that happen? I suspect adoption may be a <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ali, wh where would you go? Anytime, any place? I think I'd go and see some of that original Shakespeare theatre stuff oh, that they answer. did in that round theatre. <laughs> the, the globe. Yeah. Um, I'd be really interested to have seen people pushing the theatrical boundaries at that yeah, time. Wow. Um, and also, I, I just think it's so interesting, the class system back then, and it would be amazing to see those people mm. and how they related to each other. And what happens like when the Queen turns up and everyone's laying their coats down for her and stuff. I, I think it's... It's just a really cool time. I mean, obviously, there are no cures for anything. <laughs> so that's not great. Yeah, don't die while you're there. Exactly. That would be unfortunate. It would be, yeah. fle it would be a fleeting yeah. trip. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think in this hypothetical, we can just visit. Okay. okay. In that uh, case, definitely, yeah, Renaissance Britain. Joanna. Do you know what came to my mind? Is I would go back and see someone amazing sing in a dirty jazz bar oh, somewhere. Wow, and the first yeah. person that came to my mind was Etta James, just to like see someone of that calibre back then yeah, in the wow. environment of a dive bar somewhere in America. Amazing. That's what came to my head. So I'm going to go with that. Great mm. choice. What about you, Andrew? I don't know. The end. I don't know. <laughs> what about like cave times or something? <laughs> 
What, what is it about me that says I want to visit cave time? Well, you like tech, so I... So you want to strip from me all tech? <laughs> Maybe you might like to be there at the conception of some things. Oh, like seeing, seeing fire, the first tech. Yeah, invented. the very first fire. <laughs> Upgrading it. Go back and give them the secret of, of USB charging. Yeah. See what, see what happens. Yeah. That's a good call. Mm, could um, be that. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, going back and seeing one of those amazing artists sounds brilliant. Joanna, what is your vibe? What's your favourite type of music? Oh, I really, I know it's cliche, but I really like a lot of everything. Except country music. Have a bit of an aversion to country music. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Okay. Um, but yeah, Etta James is probably my favourite singer. I love all that jazz and blues, and those big female voices. I'm a 90s, you know, indie kid that grew up in Glastonbury. Right. So, so that's part of me as well. Yeah, for you sure. You literally grew up in Glastonbury? Yeah. Like on the, on, no, on the farm? No, it's actually a town. Yeah. <laughs> People are always like, you grew up in a festival. Yeah. Like, there's no. other stuff there. Yeah, there's a little town called Glastonbury um, that is amazing and weird and uh, there's a lot of spirituality wrapped around it. Because oh, Glastonbury tour Glastonbury with the tour, Arthurian legends. The Isle of Avalon. Apparently King Arthur is buried in the Abbey ruins there. And I think I'm right in saying that some people believe that all the ley lines in the world lead to Glastonbury. So there's a lot of people doing pilgrimages. Oh, the to energy flow. It's a lot of crystal shops. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> if you need some crystals, that's where you gotta go. Notice I've got crystals, crystals on. There. Yeah, and I mean what, and what are those, please? Oh, these two are citrine and pink tourmaline, which are my two girls' birthstones. Oh, how yeah. lovely. I'm wearing black tourmaline myself. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. yeah. I went to a crystal shop. We're just having a chat now about, about crystals. crystals. Yeah, we've gone um, there. I went to a crystal shop in uh, Brighton. Oh, yeah. And it was absolutely amazing. I, I went into the shop and came out feeling like a different person. Oh. With the energy flow in there was just insane. It was amazing. That's magic. Yeah. yeah. Well, apparently, we're supposed to put them outside during the full moon, aren't we? Haven't yeah, got charge them up. Yet. Yeah, charge them up. Yeah, love that. Yeah. That's great. So so that's, that's where you're from. Glastonbury yeah. it's running through you all that amazing energy all those ley lines that's mm -hmm. great yeah and so and when you when you were younger and you were growing up there what was that like for you were, were you a stage school kid were you a singing kid like how did that oh come? definitely definitely a stagey child yeah but with a good side of you know watching all the cool indie bands in the evenings mm. when I was allowed out of the house um but yeah I was definitely a stagey kid I started I'm not a dancer, but I started dancing at the age of three. So you think I'd be better by now. Huh. Um, but yeah, did some dancing and then did lots of Amdram stuff locally, uh, which was amazing, really. You know, all that experience and get to play those big roles. And then you get out into the wild world and realise that you'll never get to play those roles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was great. Yeah. Did you go to the festival when you were growing up that way? I was allowed to go after I passed my GCSEs. Yeah. And it was like this magical escapism. I just had never felt so free uh, wandering around. There's just so much to see. Oh, Have you been? A, it's amazing. Yeah. You wander around the whole extent of it. There's yeah. extraordinary sort of things you don't really associate. There used to be a, a, a sort of, they call themselves the Green Tribe. Yes. And they, they built this little village with really good a wigwam style tents but they really well laid it out and it was beautiful looking and they had a little crash tent where people could leave their kids and they would play around in there now, i was i was so impressed by the other stuff actually at glastonbury the, the first two times i went there rather than what you traditionally go and see but what was the biggest act you what was the first act that really impressed you there oh my goodness oh i saw so many um I was there the year that Beyonce headlined. Oh, and actually wow. that's probably not what I expected myself to say, but that was epic to see yeah. a woman oh, like, headlining the pyramid stage. Yeah, wow. um, yeah, who else did I see? Muse. I think I passed out. I waited all day to be front row at Muse and then I passed out on like the third song and got oh, carried out over no. the barrier. Uh, so that was quite exciting. And so <laughs> we saw like James Brown before he died. Oh, and um, Jamie Cullum was actually one of my highlights mm. he was wonderful but like you say you could literally walk around not see any music at all and have the best time and there's, so. a, there's a great circus tent they've yeah. got all these sort of circus acts you can go and see there's cabaret and theatre yeah. it's really phenomenal wow yeah, you guys have been I know a couple of festivals but never Glastonbury no? I haven't Phil no you must yes I shall good <laughs> let's go now Ellie <laughs>
you mentioned doing the amateur theatre when you were growing up. So what what's your favourite role that you played at that time? Oh, probably Laurie in Oklahoma. Oh, nice. great. Yes. That was really Fabulous. fun. I remember religiously watching the National Theatre's version on DVD um, with obviously Josephina Gabrielle was... Uh, mm. Laurie and then I later got to work with her and just like followed her around staring at her all day because I just loved her so much <laughs> that's great um, yeah that was really fun oh amazing yeah and was that with a particular theatre group that was happening there or it was your stage school or? um no it was just the local theatre Strode Theatre shout out to Strode Theatre yeah, they're Rutherland still going Strode strong theater. they're still so supportive it's amazing my wife knew Josephina Gabriel because my wife's Portuguese ah. and they were at ballet school together because oh, wow. she started off as a ballet dancer yeah and then she came over and went into musical theatre. I remember she got us tickets. We went and see, saw her in Chicago. She was in oh, Chicago yeah. and she was phenomenal. In that. She is phenomenal. I adore her. We did Merrily We Roll Along together. And yeah, she was amazing. That was cool. an amazing job. We were at the Chocolate Factory originally. And oh, all, yeah. you all share a dressing room. Sort of the girls have one and the boys have one. And uh, yeah, getting to share a dressing room with Josephina Gabrielle and Jenna Russell mm. was a highlight <laughs> for sure. How wonderful. What stories. a great space that is as yeah. well, isn't yeah. it? The menu is just amazing. Did you did you have an enjoyable contract there? Oh, the best. We just had the best time and it was over Christmas as well. Mm. So I can't believe it was 10 years ago now. So yeah, it was, it was yeah, brilliant. Wow. And I sort of had a really small role, but I covered three big roles which in a Sondheim is no mean feat um yeah yeah. that's a lot of learning (laughs) yeah Uh, it's like swinging on a Sondheim show it's uh yeah well extreme and also one of those underrated gems I think Mary Lee Roll Long just one of my favorite shows and not yeah not celebrated as much as it should no I think we were the first people to bring it to the West End yeah um and we did really well but yeah it didn't last that long. Although it's on in, in America now, our production of it, which is really strange. It's yes, just happening we, out there. It took a long time to transfer, but it yeah. has like Daniel Radcliffe in it. Daniel Radcliffe, yeah. yeah. Maria's directing it again, Maria Friedman. Oh, so. wow. Yeah. Do you guys know that they're doing a film version of Merrily We Roll Along? Yeah. yeah. So this is Richard Linklater, the guy who directed Boyhood, you know, that film that they took 20 years to, uh, to direct. And he's directing uh, Merrily We Roll Along in the same way uh, if you don't know, Merrily We Roll Along uh, has a backwards timeline. So it starts with the characters old and then they get progressively younger during the show. So he's already started filming with Ben Platt uh, in the lead and he's filming the young scenes now. And over 30 years, he is filming uh, the entire musical in real time. Wow. And then they'll edit it in reverse order. Amazing. So it's like nearly as long as it took for it to go to America from London. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's amazing. What a cool project. Absolutely. And I, I really wish he'd already done that starting 30 years ago yeah. so I could watch it. But yeah. hopefully we'll all hang on another 20 years yeah, uh, and we can watch it. That's really exciting, isn't it? Imagine the admin. Oh, yeah. That's a spreadsheet and a half. <laughs> and Absolutely. all the actors have committed to the whole project, presumably. Mm, I, I guess so, yeah. Wow. Because you can't Brilliant. really can't easily recast can you no. but then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be such a long commitment it'd be like sort of you know two weeks or something to come in and film the bits of that age now and then you go away for another yeah, 10 years true, and yeah. it's another two weeks so it's so it's it is a very long-term plan but it's not massively you know uh, taking up a lot of time in each for each performance mm. year a spreadsheet I, with tabs in that case. <laughs> my yes. concern would be something might happen to one of your performers halfway through. And then yeah. you think, oh, how, what do we do about the stuff we've yeah. done? How we can't, wow. you know. Maybe they're giving them really good, healthy food and PTs. <laughs> it's like a 30-year free health yeah. plan. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Cotton wool. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I think with Boyhood, I, I seem to remember that his daughter was in it or, or maybe uh, the daughter of one of the production staff and she decided like halfway through the uh, filming, decided she didn't want to be in it anymore. And so they just wrote her out. They could do that because they were doing it on the fly and it could sort of improv with it a bit. Whereas with Merrily Roll Along, it's yeah. like, no, you can, you need to be there for the It's duration. all about the three friends, isn't it? Yeah, so, absolutely. yeah. I've changed my vote of Renaissance Britain. I'm right. going to go to the release date of Merrily Roll Along oh, go <laughs> in the future because I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Patience is not one of my virtues. <laughs> They're so great, these film adaptations of musicals that are coming up, aren't they? The new, you know, new ideas, new ways to look at things. I've really enjoyed Sweeney Todd. I know I'm talking like 10 years ago or eight years ago now, but I loved that production and, you know, how the colour palette is so reduced and you're watching something that's like black and red and white pretty much and a bit of grey. And, and I just love the aesthetic and the bold choices that the directors are making 
making nowadays mm. with the musicals. Mm. Does anyone else have a favourite musical film of recent years? I have to say, I was a I'm big fan of The Greatest Showman. Oh, it was oh. beautiful, really, yeah. It was like, for me, a renaissance. It, oh, they still can make great film musicals, but I don't have to, you know, critically analyse. I can just sit here and let this happen and just go away thinking, I loved that. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas, where I, I was not a fan of the Les Mis musical. Mm. I had issues with that, regardless of some of the technical achievements within it, but I just had real issues. I thought I'd rather watch a stage seven series. And what, what were your issues? Was it too many close-ups? Yes, uh, too many close-ups. Some of the singing was bad. They made Hugh Jackman sing out of his register. Uh, I felt, this is a musical. Where are the big musical moments? I want to see the big chorus all singing these numbers. I don't want to see individual shots, rounds and things. I had a lot of issues with that. It feels like we're just... It's the big just tip of a rant. The tip of the ice. It's the tip of a rant, <laughs> tip and, of a rant. and uh, I, we haven't got the time. And <laughs> Joe here and I I'm don't a little bit to... scared to open yeah. that can, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> well, I, the other one I had an issue with was Chicago. Oh, I was about to say I liked that one. I, I well, like Because I've been too. to see, as we said earlier on, yeah. I've been to see on stage, and then I watched it and I kind of thought, um, there's a sequence when they do the cell block tango, when mm. they're all you know, triple threats before me. And you think, wow, that's really something. And though the others are very talented, I kind of felt, I don't feel you as performers are as good at musical theatre mm. as these other people. And I'm aware of it. And I'm suddenly realised that you're in this because you're stars, not because you're musical theatre people. Whereas the classic MGM musicals, Gene Kelly's in it because there's nobody who dances like him. Mm-hmm. Fred Astaire is in it because he is the best dancer. They can put a song, they are the best at that. They're not in it because they're a name and a star. And that, that is an issue for me with musicals on mm. film. Mm, totally fair. That, I love- that said, I thought Chicago, I thought the way they, they managed the two realities of Chicago is really lovely. I love that going into the vaudeville fantasy whenever we have musical numbers and then going into the reality of the scene. I thought that was a really nice approach to say something <laughs> positive. <laughs> say something positive about it. <laughs> also, just Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah, I just love amazing. her. What yeah. a great. woman. Just love her. Yeah. yeah. Great performance. Who's... I'd probably choose Funny Girl. Got to just go back oh, yeah. to the vintage mm. Babs. That right. film is just, that's a Sunday afternoon for me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The moment uh, Don't Rain on My Parade comes oh. out is so, so wonderful. Just on the edge it. of the boat. Yeah, everyone's crowding around yeah. her and it's just, da, 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 da. <laughs> like the song just suddenly bursts out of her. It's mm. wonderful. What a great moment. Yeah. Oh, she's just a superstar, isn't yeah, she? She's, she's another one of those women that you're just like, yeah, you rock in every way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Is anyone excited for the the Wicked movie coming mm. out? Uh, John Chu directing Cynthia Revo and Ariana Grande, I think. Yes, very, very excited. It's going to be a while, isn't it? There's two now. There's two movies. Oh, yes, they yeah. split it into two, didn't they? I yeah. forgot that. They've split it into two? Yeah. yeah. Oh, because I was going to say... My- <laughs> <laughs> Bill's about to start another rant. Oh, God. Here comes another rant. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that I felt the stage show had, you know, was a bit long. There were some bits in it when I was looking, reading the programme and there were bits in it I was sort of counting the dancers on stage. <laughs> um, before the next best bit came along. And I was thinking the advantage of a film is they you know, they can cut things down. They generally don't sing the full score. They don't do the whole music. They can make it shorter. But if they're doing two films, they're clearly adding extra They're going to make it longer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the book's quite chunky, isn't it? There's a, it's based yeah, on a yeah. book. Yeah, that's quite chunky. Maybe yeah, they're writing some new things. I have read it, but I mean, sort of 20 years ago when I was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. it's much darker, I think. It's yeah. like, it's much, it's much less of a sort of, hey, the, the, the Wicked Witch was just misunderstood and more like, no, this is how someone becomes evil. Yeah. They, those books were creepy, weren't they? The originals as well. Oh, the L. Frank Baum the originals, L. Fra- yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're just terrifying. Does, does anyone remember the Wheelers from Return to Oz? Yes, yeah. absolutely yeah. terrifying. These cra- crazy guys who had long arms and they on the end of them were wheels and they'd wheel around and chase Dorothy. That's the sort of thing that has stuck with me from yeah. childhood where I can't quite lose that image. Um, yeah, just bizarre. Strange, yeah. strange um, like like you're dreaming it, you know, like it's one of those crazy kind of dreams and then someone's made it into a film. Yeah. It's like, yep, that's, that's terrifying. Yeah, if you're listening and you half remember that, Google it, but beware that it <laughs> will freak you out. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great film, wasn't it, Return to Us? And there was a friend of mine who was responsible for a lot of the physical movement on that. Really? Yeah, really? called Just, Just In Case, I think his name was. And, uh, what a great name. What a great name. <laughs> well, he was, a, he was sort of a mind performer. It's like an and improvathon he name. he blagged his way into that job. Because he'd been, I knew him for doing, you know, weird impro gigs, funnily enough, at the Glastonbury Festival before he got that gig. Mm, wow. Just In Case, that's Just great. Just In Case. 
And would you tell us a bit about your cabaret background? That sounds fascinating, Joanna, because especially the burlesque dancing and everything, it's really fun. Yeah, it was It was fun. I've done it for about 15 years now. I actually decided the other day that it was my last show. I mean, never say never because, you know, we've all got rent to pay. But yeah, I've done it for about 15 years. I basically stumbled into Proud Cabaret on a hen do um, and thought I could do a good job of being the singer there. And I remember I waltzed up, I'd had a few drinks obviously on a hendo, waltzed up to the host and said, you should have me as your singer in your show, which is not something I would ever normally do, but but I felt really strongly about it. Um, And she said, right, come back next week, sing a song live on stage, wear a dress kind of thing. And I was like, (laughs) okay. I just remember coming back the next week. And um, I mean, back then the changing room was literally a corridor behind the kitchen Mm -hmm. um and there was this like amazonian burlesque dancer sticking her pasties on and i was like oh my god what am i doing (laughs) um but it was great and i started it went well i started singing regularly for her and then the club itself sort of said um do you host and i've never hosted never i never thought i'd be someone who would speak improvise or um you know, make jokes or anything. But of course I was waitressing full time. So I said, yes, yes, of course I host. Yeah, sure. And then I started getting booked sort of four or five nights a week hosting the burlesque shows. And that kind of just grew. I ended up doing the Hurley Burley show at the Duchess Theatre, which was um, amazing and doing like an Italian tour where I had to do everything in Italian. Um, Yeah. So it's been an amazing side career. Um, I say side career, it's probably been more successful than my acting career in many ways, but um, I've, I've loved it and I've met some incredible people because everybody's just out there on their own, trying to create their acts, trying to create their next thing. It's a very um, exciting platform to be around. Do you remember so, what you sang? Yeah, I sang Cry Me a River. Yeah, That's that was my first, my first song, yeah. And it quickly moved on to mine hair she got me some backing dancers and yeah suddenly the very not body confident girl was like in a corset and heels and stockings on stage singing Liza Minnelli songs and just like (laughs) it was amazing it was such a baptism of fire and just kept me kept me going you know kept me performing kept my voice strong and taught me so much about confidence and and timing and I was I was going to ask you if you'd ever played Sally Bowles oh look if you're listening I need to play Sally Bowles absolutely I actually tweeted about it the other day because I'm the real life Sally Bowles I've been London Sally Bowles yeah for 15 years yeah we can hope absolutely we can hope we'll put it out to the universe and wish on our crystals yes and our crystals yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna cleanse them tonight and (laughs) wish upon Sally Bowles (laughs) Yeah. So uh, have you have you done much improvising, Joanna, ever? I want to say no, although hosting, cabaret hosting can sometimes feel a bit like that. But you're on yeah. your own. So it's not like you're interacting and improvising. No, yeah, but sure. I'm a big fan of showstoppers. Oh, great. I love it. In fact, I'm coming to your next opening night in the West End. At the Cambridge. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, very excited for that. Cool. Coming along um, May the 22nd, opening uh, at the Cambridge Theatre back in the West End. Yeah. Can't wait. Love it. Um, and like, you know, love all the old whose line is it anyway and stuff. So yeah, but not not masses. I'd like, oh, actually, you know, I worked at Madame Two Swords for about nine months and that was a lot of um, improvisation with other actors, like uh, street yeah. shows and stuff like that. So that was really good. But that was a long time ago now. What, so. Did you play a character at Madame Two Swords? Yeah, we kind of had different areas that we worked in. Um, so if you, the best bit was being on the queue outside because right. you used to take a truck full of costumes out and just there'd be like three or four of you and you'd just improv shows for all the tourists but most people were French and didn't know what the hell was going on (laughs) so that was quite interesting um but yeah we were also sort of we were football coaches and we were big brother back at the time there was a big brother diary room so that was sort of that was the best one actually because you got to sit in the dark and tell people to do things amazing Um, yeah that was a funny old job yeah. Yeah, fun times. Good, you've done some amazing uh, things. Done lots of, I le- learnt balloon modelling on that job as well. <laughs> wow. I was a mime. I was a mime. That was fun. Then you don't have to talk all day. Yeah, right. Just walk around being weird, which is my forte. So. <laughs> mm. That's great. Uh, well, um, would you like to do some improvising with us now? Why not? Let's, let's try. Let's make up a little musical theatre song with Joanna Woodward. Let's do it. Joanna, would you like to sing with me about our strong female icons that we adored when we were young kids? Absolutely. Great. (laughs) Well, as I sat in my bedroom, I was thinking what I would like to sing that I 
thought to myself, it's time, it's time to give Whitney Houston a play. And as I sat over the street, started tapping my feet to Etta James. Just be like Barbara Streisand When I grow up I wanna be just like Barbara Streisand When I grow up If I could just be like Barbara Streisand When I grow up If I could just be like Barbara Streisand mm-hmm. Babs was my idol She was right there on the screen When she sang that song upon that boat well it made me want to scream and looking at that theater stage there was ellen green and she made me she made me want to be seen Ooh, certainly seem i see could just be, be barbara streisand when i grow up if i could just be barbara streisand when i grow up said if i could just, just be barbara streisand just be me but a little bit like Barbara Streisand what was that like I loved it. I mean, I'm shaking from head to toe from like the stress and adrenaline, but loved it. Yeah. And from your complete awesomeness. Thank you. That's very, very kind. It you was, too. It was brilliant having you here. <laughs> Time Traveller's Wife is opening in October in the West End at the Apollo Theatre. That is right. That is it. Yeah. Anything else you want to plug whilst you're here? No, no. Just my walk that we talked about. And yeah, come and see Time Traveller's Wife. Come and support a new British musical. So very excited. Thanks, Joanna. Thanks so much for having me. Was Joanna Woodward. Oh, what a woman she is. What a voice. That was so soulful, that song. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so looking forward to seeing Time Traveller's Wife. Absolutely, yeah. October, sign me up, I'm there. We didn't talk about this in the episode, but I, I don't think Joss Stone and Dave Stewart have done a musical before. Really? So this is their first collaboration? I think so, How yeah. exciting. I did love Joss Stone back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. And now. <laughs> that, as well so what, what happened Abby? why did you stop liking her hey? oh, we just had a difference of artistic opinion and yeah. we went our separate ways <laughs> uh, yeah what a lovely woman she is very well rounded lots of different facets to her life she's a parent you know she's got all these different things going on much like you Andrew <laughs> yeah, th- th- thanks <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know that compliment was coming at the end of that sentence so it took, it took me quite by surprise <laughs> That's how I like my compliments to come, uh, by surprise. <laughs> yeah. So talking about something very, very great hair. By the way, you're great. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, to have children and be a family person when you're working in theatre, I imagine, takes quite a bit of commitment, and I applaud that. Well, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages. Sure. You know, being freelance, maybe, you know, time can sometimes be a bit more flexible. Mm, absolutely. But, you know, also you might be busy the exact times that children are out of school. So, yes. you know. Of course, yeah, yeah. Ups and downs. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what The Time Traveller's Wife is all about. Back and forth, up and down and round about. <laughs> absolutely. I'm going to see you at the Cambridge Theatre on May the 22nd, Ali. Very much looking forward to it. If you could pick any setting in the world, what would it be? Oh, you know I don't like hypotheticals. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, I, I think we'd do like a, an epic, like a Rome or a Greece. I was going to say like ancient those. Greece. Maybe our brains have just fused over these microphones, Andrew. That's a terrifying thought, Ali. And we've just, we've been a manifest an ancient Greece musical. Great. Let's see if it happens. Great. Well, if you're listening to this on our release date in May and you're coming yeah. along to the, to the Cambridge Theatre on the 22nd, please bring Greek flags and <laughs> wave them from the balcony. Ancient Greek flags. Ancient, yeah, very specific <laughs> design with the dust coming off them. Yeah. Um, uh, so that we can do an ancient Greece musical. Of course, we will do any others. 
<laughs> just you know slightly unwillingly yes of course with a with a stone in our shoe we'll Absolutely. do the others uh, and we're also on tour you can see us in salisbury you can see us at the lowry in manchester you can see us in ulverston and lancaster peterborough and other places <laughs> Check out the website. Oh, and you should also check our other socials. We're on Insta, we're on TikTok, and we've got some fantastic challenges that are coming out across all our social media platforms, including Twitter and Facebook. Absolutely. There's a video just out right now, Ellie, of you singing songs uh, <laughs> using lines from a bag, and it's going down very well. Is it really? <laughs> Great. Uh, well, that's really exciting. <laughs> all right. Um, I, I think uh, I've said enough. Yes, I think it's time for us to sign off and you to go about your day. What will you do today? Maybe you might listen to a musical that we've mentioned, Merrily We Roll Along, or perhaps Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, or, you know, listen to another musical and tell us about it on one of our social handles. Please do. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Bye. Goodbye. Your hair's great. Surprise compliment. Surprise compliment.